Welcome back to Shark Week 2021. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the world's only plant-eating shark, and also perhaps the world's cutest shark, the bonnethead. It may look to you like a small squished hamhead shark, and that's because it is. It's a member of the family Saphrinidae, making it one of the only nine species of hammerhead around. It is far smaller than the most famous hammerhead, the Great Hammerhead, being only 60 to 90 meters long, compared to the Great Hammerhead, which is 4 to 6 meters long. Before we get to the interesting plant eating part, there is another unique thing about these sharks. They are the only known sharks to display sexual dimorphism in their head structure. Most sharks do have sexual dimorphism, but usually it's only a size difference, with females being larger than males. However, the bonnet heads have a different head shape based on sex. Females have a more rounded, broad head, while males possess a distinct bulge at the front of their head that makes them look more arrow-shaped and less rounded. This bulge forms as the shark becomes sexually mature. They also have another unique attribute. Their pectoral fins are surprisingly large for hammerhead sharks, as most species swim using solely their tail fins, and use their large cephalofoil or hammerhead shaped heads to control their pitch underwater. The bonnet heads obviously have much smaller cephalofoils and therefore compensate by having larger more developed pectoral fins in relation to their body size. They then use these to control themselves underwater and swim better, more like the other species of shark that don't have hammerheads. Now onto the main part of this video. Though the bonnet head shark is a plant eating shark, it isn't a herbivore. It still eats crustaceans and fish, as well as seagrass, so it's omnivorous. However, around 50 to 60% of its diet is made up of seagrass. Now, seagrass as a source of food is quite interesting. It has been found to be very high in nutrients and proteins, and its benefits to the many species that eat it have been shown. Sea turtles that eat seagrass are shown to have more babies and grow larger due to the high protein content, compared to turtles of the same species that don't. However, the protein content of seagrass is still only around 12-19%, to compared to 22% for most fish meat, and so it can really only supplement the protein needs of the bonnethead shark, hence why it also still consumes meat. However, some scientists have theorised that they do not deliberately eat seagrass, rather they are only consuming it by accident as they dig in the mud to find their crustacean prey. This is supported by findings that younger bonnet heads tend to have a higher proportion of seagrass in their stomachs compared to adult sharks, suggesting that the younger bonnet heads are less able hunters and so accidentally consume more seagrass than experienced adult hunters. However, this theory is becoming more and more unlikely as research progresses. As previously mentioned, 50 to 60% of their stomach contents are plants, and so they must be rather bad hunters to be doing this by accident. Studies done where seagrass was used as bait for these sharks also show that they very deliberately went and ate the grass, with them fully knowing that there was no meat, owing to their excellent sense of smell. Though it seems likely they do deliberately eat seagrass, meat is still the primary source of protein and energy for the bonnethead, as seagrass only usually has between 20 to 60 calories per 100 grams. It is thought that they might eat seagrass for another reason beyond just supplementing their diet. The theory is that seagrass acts as a cushion inside the shark's stomach to protect it from the spiny carapace of the blue crab that are its favourite prey. Other animals that eat sharp objects don't usually face this problem. Sea otters eat sea urchins, some of the sharpest, most painful creatures on the planet, but they have arms and so are able to pull the spines off before consumption. Though it probably does have a cushioning effect upon the shark's stomach, it's more likely that it's simply a second-hand benefit, and the primary reason for consuming seagrass is for nutritional purposes. This is shown by the large percentage of its diet that is seagrass, and by how it has adapted to properly digest and extract nutrients from the grass, instead of just passing the grass without absorbing its beneficial proteins and minerals. This was proven in 2018 when a team of scientists wanted to test whether they were actually getting nutrients from the plants, as if they were not, they can't be classed as omnivores. They fed a group of captured bonnet heads a 90% seagrass diet over the course of several weeks. The seagrass they fed the sharks was marked with a detectable and harmless isotope, carbon-13. They could then test the shark's blood and tissue to see if it had been absorbed into the shark for nutrients. The feces were also checked to see how much was left undigested. The results show that the sharks were undeniably omnivores, as the carbon-13 was detected in their tissue, showing the grass had been properly digested. The faecal test showed that about half of the grass remained undigested and was passed, however that still means the shark was making use of 50% of the seagrass. 
They then look to find out how the shark was doing it, by searching for enzymes in the gut with the ability to break down cellulose. They found the enzyme B-glucosidase in the sharks. This enzyme is found in a number of different herbivores such as cows, and it is excellent at breaking down the cellulose cell walls of plants, allowing for the nutrients to be digested. The final confirmation of the shark's omnivorous status, if you still need more evidence, is that during the study despite being fed a 90% plant-based diet, the sharks not only didn't die, they also gained weight as they didn't have to move around to hunt. All of this makes sense as if the shark was not getting the nutrients from the grass, then it would most likely starve, seeing as over 60% of its stomach contents were found to be seagrass. If this was just dead weight and eaten for the sole purpose of protecting its stomach, then it's a very inefficient diet. Their teeth are well adapted to the varied diet, possessing both sharp frontal teeth and broad flat molars at the back for the purposes of crushing hard-shelled prey and grinding up seagrass. This differs from the more fish-eating sharks like the Great White that don't have molars and possess the same sort of sharp cutting teeth all throughout their mouths. So you may be thinking, why was it found that young adults had more seagrass in their bellies than older adults? Well, seeing as they do get nutrition from the seagrass, it's more likely that they aren't being inefficient hunters, but for a young adult that is inexperienced at hunting, it's far easier just to eat more seagrass. Bonnet heads are coastal sharks owing to their need for seagrass and inhabit the shallows of southern North America, Central America, and Northern South America, on both the west coast and east coast. It enjoys warm tropical and subtropical waters and will even venture up estuaries in search of seagrass and the crustaceans and small fish that live alongside them to eat. These sharks are however under threat. The populations are decreasing massively in the Pacific, Caribbean and the South America's Atlantic coast due to the destruction of seagrass habitats. In the northern Atlantic and Gulf they are faring far better, but overall they are still classed as endangered by the IUCN. One final interesting snippet about the bonnet head that has nothing to do with its diet, but it's too interesting not to mention, was the events that unfolded at Henry Dawley Zoo in Nebraska in 2001. A bonnet head shark gave birth to a pup, despite being in a tank with only females. It was the first confirmed case of parthenogenesis in a shark, where an egg from a mother develops into an embryo without any fertilization from a male. So there you have it, a truly unique and amazing shark. Not only the only omnivorous, but also the only shark with sexual dimorphism of the head, the only hammerhead to use its dorsal fins for swimming, and the first shark to ever naturally successfully go through parthenogenesis. A truly fascinating animal. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.